Hello and welcome to this week's Wireless Land News Desk on May the 4th, 2018. My name is Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO at CWNP. And this week, just a couple of things in the news. First of all, very briefly, this week the IEEE ratified 802.11aj. Now, it'll be easy to remember what this particular amendment does for us because of the J. It is the opening of more capabilities in unique frequency areas within Japan. So 45 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, giving them some extra capabilities with the DMG physical layer, 802.11ad, so that they can implement it more effectively within that regulatory domain. So it doesn't necessarily impact the rest of the world in a significant way yet, but it is something that is beneficial for Japan. So that's 802.11aj. The second thing I wanna talk about for a little bit longer is I'm gonna call it interpreting the headlines. Now, this is called a news desk, so I give you news and my news needs to be interpreted too in the context of everything else that I say and so forth. So I wanna be fair to those who wrote the headline and subline or byline that I'm going to be sharing here, but here's the headline. Mobile data usage overtakes Wi-Fi and CBRS threatens. Here's the subline. Wi-Fi could be in for a rough ride. It's getting hit by cellular data plus a new chunk of data-friendly spectrum the Citizen Band Radio Service, or CBRS. Well, the headline, first of all, you have to pay close attention to it. Notice the words carefully. It is saying that Wi-Fi could be in for a rough ride, and then it says it's getting hit by cellular data. Well, Wi-Fi could only be being hit by cellular data by devices that can do both Wi-Fi and cellular data. So this news is not relevant to industry support for Wi-Fi and laptops tablets that don't have cellular capabilities and so forth. Though we will see more mobile devices that are dual Wi-Fi and cellular, 5G, LTE, whatever, as we go forward. But we have to keep in mind, this is only talking about devices that can communicate on the cellular network. But it is important to keep these stats in mind. So when you look further in the article, you find that AT&T users dropped their usage of Wi-Fi instead of cellular from 52% to 49%. Verizon users dropped from 54% to 51%, so both of those three percentage points. And then T-Mobile users dropped from 43 to 41, two percentage points. Sprint users stayed even, no drop or change there. There's no question that these statistics show a drop in the usage of Wi-Fi for, in this case, in the vast majority of scenarios, cell phone users, mobile phone users. They are able to get what they need done on the cellular network now not necessarily because Wi-Fi doesn't work, but because LTE does. They've got better coverage, they've got better signals, and in many cases they have unlimited data plans. And that was the big key that drove people to go to Wi-Fi. So this is not a statement of Wi-Fi is better, LTE is better, or anything like that. It's simply a statement of what is the user capable of doing within their contract. And now that many, many contracts are opening to be unlimited, though I did find out this last month that unlimited is not always unlimited with my carrier. I found out that when I went over 20 gigabits that I really didn't have unlimited, they warned me that if I hit 25, then things would slow down in some congested areas and I wouldn't get favorable treatment. <laughs> So I guess it's unlimited within limits. Well, still, because of the fact that I have unlimited data, I actually rarely ever flip my cell phone, my mobile phone, which is an iPhone, over to Wi-Fi. The only time I do is when Apple tells me you need to switch to Wi-Fi to do this. That's about the only time I switch to Wi-Fi. I really don't use Wi-Fi that much unless I happen to be in a place that has good Wi-Fi, but no cellular. Like when I was in California a couple weeks ago, I was in an area at one point where cellular was horrible, but there was Wi-Fi there that was actually really good, about 60 megabits per second down and 20 megabits per second up. I could live with that over bad cellular. So here's the thing. The benefit of the mobile providers giving unlimited data, giving good signal and coverage, is that users don't have to be bothered by switching from cellular or LTE over to Wi-Fi. And hopefully this continues to be true as 5G comes into play in the coming years. So I think that's a good thing. And I don't think it's necessarily a threat to Wi-Fi. It is instead a statement of the good that's happening in the cellular networks. Years ago, you couldn't get a good enough signal to do something effective that required any kind of high data rate. But it's gotten much better over time. And the result is the use of LTE because you don't need Wi-Fi. You're still gonna use Wi-Fi if you don't have good LTE, indoors, things like that. 
And as I said, I use LTE almost exclusively. So the point is that cellular networks have gotten better and contracts have gotten better. So that device, mobile phones, no longer need to swap from cellular to Wi-Fi for many people for many parts of the day. That's actually a good thing. Now, let's talk about Wi-Fi and whether or not it's in danger because of this thing. I'm going to suggest that it's not. There are new use cases for Wi-Fi coming up every day. We're seeing in the consumer space very unusual use cases, I would argue, use cases where we're doing things like Wi-Fi grills and so forth. So very odd use cases in the consumer space that make me say that area is growing. And then we have in the enterprise space, very interesting new uses for Wi-Fi. So there are new uses coming on the scene while cellular data is dropping a bit, but yet wait, we're still up at 40, 50% of people want to do that much of their data on Wi-Fi. They're certainly not going to be happy if Wi-Fi is not available still. So the issue is we're not anywhere near a threshold where Wi-Fi is in danger today. So let me kind of give you my summary of all this with three points. Number one, Wi-Fi is not going anywhere anytime soon because it's still the reliable in-building solution and is the only option for many devices, many laptops, tablets, things like that. Wi-Fi is the only option. Number two, cellular internet access will be used even more. We're going to use more and more cellular internet access. We'll continue to see the Wi-Fi usage timeshare drop over time for those mobile devices, as we should. They should be able to work perfectly fine on the LTE system. We should have unlimited data contracts, but that's just my opinion. I don't have to do the budget at the mobile phone provider companies or the mobile prov service provider companies. So this is not equal to the Wi-Fi sky is falling. It's equal to cellular providers are finally getting it right. And I hope they don't change that as 5G rolls over and they try to recoup their costs for investment. Finally, the third point, and this is very important. Anytime you hear something about Wi-Fi might go down because this is coming up, always remember Wi-Fi is in our infrastructures today. So for that reason, being in place, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So what does a wireless LAN engineer or administrator or professional need to do? Well, it's my opinion that you should know other networking technologies, LTE, 5G, Bluetooth, Zigbee, RFID, etc., and any other air signal system, can I call it that, a wireless system, right, that you might need to interconnect with. It's very important for the wireless LAN professional to understand how to interconnect with these other systems. I'm not saying you have to be a master of 5G like you are of Wi-Fi or of Bluetooth even like you are of Wi-Fi, but you need to know the integration points, the interference points, the problem areas, and how to deal with those in relation to your wireless network and how to help your users easily transition from one to the other should they need to. So that's my take on that headline this week. And that's all I have today. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do below. You can click the bell to get notifications. And of course, you can always check out our monthly webinars that we do, usually the third Thursday of each month. It does vary sometimes if I have to be at a conference or something like that, but it's generally the third Thursday of each month. And don't forget, the Wi-Fi Trek Conference is coming up in San Diego, and you can go to conferences.cwnp.com to get more information. Thanks for viewing, and I'll see you next week.